All right, so we're going to start Adobe After Effects. The first thing, of course, we're going to do is we need to open it. So if you're looking for After Effects, you've never opened it before. It is this purple one. It says AE. It is very similar in color to uh, Premiere and Animate. I really wish they hadn't have done it that way. If you can see, it's very similar, but we were looking for the AE. So go ahead and start it. I already had it on my dock. Okay, so it's starting up. This is the 2021 edition. Okay, it starts up, but give it a second. Sometimes it will pop up a secondary window and it doesn't seem to be doing that this time. If you see that secondary window, you can go ahead and close it. If it's asking you to log in, please log in with your Google email from the school, uh, the students.nic.net. Make sure if it asks you what kind of account it is, that it is a school or organization or something along those lines. All right, so we have just opened Adobe After Effects. It's gonna look very similar to Adobe Premiere, but it's very different. It is not the same software at all. Um, but we do have a similar setup. So in the top left, by default, we have the project folder. This is where you're gonna import stuff. Oh, see, there's that window. We're gonna close that. You can use it to import your files. So if you double click in there, you can select your files. Um, when you first open something and there's nothing else open, it'll ask you, do you want to do a new composition or do you want to do a new composition from footage? We'll come back to that. This bottom panel is the timeline. Uh, this is where you're going to see all of your compositions and all of the layers. Um, in that respect, it's a little bit like Adobe Animate, where each object is on a layer, which is very helpful. So we're just going to start with um, a new composition. So when you select that, it will pull up all these settings. Please name it. Please name it. Don't just do Comp 1. Don't just do Untitled. Please name it. Uh, this is fine for now, the 1080p. This is mostly what we're going to be working in. Frame rate, we need to set to 24. Uh, resolution full. By default, it gives you 30 seconds to work with. You can add more if you want to. And then the background color is black. You can change it to something else. So we're just going to leave that as it is for now. So now we just have a blank composition. There's We can start drawing stuff. We can add text, etc. So this is the composition window where you're going to see visually what everything looks like. Okay, so if we really want to get into some learning, we're going to pull up the learning window. So go to Window, Learn, and mine popped out for some reason. I'm going to pop it back in there. Come on. You know, sometimes technology just doesn't want to cooperate. Nope, it's just going to sit out there. Uh, for you, it might just pop up on the side. Uh, we're going to look at the overview, which is kind of what I just went over, but we're going to look at it anyway. Uh, I don't want to save this. Okay, fine. All right. So this is talking about those panels again. Uh, I have effect controls up for some reason. I don't need that up. We're going to close it. Okay, so by default, we have the project panel, right? The composition panel where you're going to see all your stuff and then your timeline where you can move stuff around okay you can always resize these just like you can in any other adobe software uh, you can also save your layouts um, right now we're on default i believe okay all right so that's the overview. Then 
it'll take you through the different basics. So we're just going to walk through these together. Of course, you can always do this on your own. This is really nice for you to kind of learn all the diff different um, capabilities of After Effects. Of course, this barely scratches the surface, but it'll be get you more familiar with it. So we're just going to say next. Actually, I'm going to close this and see if I can get it to come up. Uh, no. Can we, can we shove it? Usually you can stick it somewhere, but it does not want to do. That is silly. All right, we're going to go learn the basics. So we'll start with create a composition. No, we don't want to save. Okay. Oh, now it's in there. That's nice. Okay. So just like we did before, we're going to do a create a composition, but this time we're going to do it new composition from footage. So thankfully it's got some stuff for us to add. It asks us to add the apglogo.ai. So we're going to say, um, we're going to change some of the formatting or some of the options here. So we're going to import it as a composition instead of footage. And then we're going to say open. Okay. Now it appears in our project folder, this logo. Okay. So let's see composition. We're going to double click it. And now it's been added to our composition. So you can see it's not going to let me scrub. There it is. Okay. There's really nothing going on here. It's just, it's just graphics. All right. So the next step, it wants us to organize the composition. Okay. We're not going to save. It has a different file for us. So right here, if you can see, it has a marker right here where it wants you to do things. You can always add markers if you need to mark certain areas. There should be a button for it. It's this one. Let's see, create, drag to the left to get a new marker. Okay, so you can grab one out of there and create new markers. So that's nice. All right, we have marker number one right there. All right, so double click within the project panel and add the video file summer for us. So we're gonna add this footage again, or go to add footage, we're gonna add this one, summer footage, or summer forest. Then we're just going to click on it and drag it either onto our composition this way or down into the timeline. Okay, so now we have this cool forest in the background. Okay, when you add files to the timeline panel, you're adding different elements or layers to your composition, right? Every element is a different layer. Now you see here with the After Effects, or sorry, the Illustrator, we're already in After Effects, it had two different layers and each of these came in as a layer here. So there's a lot of correlation between Illustrator and After Effects. We'll get into that later. All right. So in the left-hand side of the timeline panel, click on the summer forest and drag it on top of the composition. Okay. So you can reorder your layers by dragging them. Well, you have to drag them over here. So I'm going to click and drag the name on top of a peak. So now it's on top. So just like you move layers in Photoshop or uh, Illustrator. Okay. You can change how long things are on the screen. So we can move to the end of the, end, uh, of the color bar. It's kind of like a purplish gray and we can shorten the duration all the way down to the marker. You can do the same thing with the text. Or of course it asked us to do that separately. Uh, it wants it to do here. 
them on. Give me that check mark. There it goes. Now, if it doesn't give you a check mark, you can just move on. Even if you've done the thing, sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, next. Change when a layer appears. All right, so you can move your cursor to the front of the a peak colored bar and click and drag its front until it reaches approximately the one second line so here's where those markers come in so i'm going to drag this over to that one second mark and then we can press the space bar to see what we did okay there it is it appears all righty these are pretty quick all right now we get to the good stuff, the animation part. This is the part that is the most important thing. All right, so preparing layers for animation. So we want to move the current time to the beginning of the timeline. In the timeline panel, select the logo layer to make it the active layer. Okay, you'll know it's active because it's highlighted and the color is brighter. In the composition panel, click on the actual logo itself and slowly drag it to the bottom of the screen. So we're going to click on the picture and drag it to the bottom. I'm holding shift to keep it straight. If you're having trouble seeing it, you can zoom out by doing uh, command minus in the composition window, not plus, minus. So now you can see where it is. All right, so that's step one. So we're going to start expanding out these layers. So if you see next to, we have the layer number, we have the color, and we have this caret that indicates that it can roll down. So I'm gonna click that arrow and you'll see transform in there. So these are all your transformation options like rotate, scale, etc. So I'm gonna roll that down. Um, so click, or sorry, expand the transform settings and find the position property, right? So you see anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity, all right? So in order to tell After Effects that this is something we're going to animate, we need to click on the little stopwatch. Anytime you see that little stopwatch logo, something can be animated. So let's say the position, when I click that, it takes its current position and creates a keyframe right there. All right, you can see the keyframe here. Okay, so over time, you can add more keyframes. If you move to a different location and change something, because it has that stopwatch on, it will create a keyframe for you. Okay, so we're going to click on, well, it can change its value to 516, or you can just drag it up. Okay. When you do that, you can see this line that connects its position from the first frame over to where it is now. We can mess with that path later, but this is the animation path. Okay, so if I scrub through, I should see that animate. Okay, and then I just did what it, I just did that. So press space bar, watch it do the thing. There you go. Okay, it does not want, it doesn't want, oh, and never mind, it gave me the check mark. But if it never, if it doesn't give you the check mark, you can go ahead and press next. Okay, we're not going to save. We're going to have it open the next thing. So now we get to practice on our own. So click next. So using animated graphic above as a reference, use what you know about changing a layer's properties over time to fade the A peak text in as it appears on screen. So we already have our animating logo, right? So we want this A peak to change opacity over time. Okay, because it's gonna fade in. So just like before, we roll it out, we roll out transform. And the thing that we want to change now is the opacity. Okay, so right now it's at a hundred. I'm going to put that at zero. Just click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe or tell After Effects you're animating it. I'm just going to go forward a little bit and change that opacity to 100. OK, 
Okay, and then it adds another keyframe there. So as you scrub through, you should see that fade in. Okay, pretty simple stuff. I, I really enjoy how keyframes work in this uh, software. Okay, so now we're gonna look at effects. There's lots of very cool effects to use in After Effects. So we're not gonna save that, that's okay. So one of the things you can add is a blur. If you come to this effect window, well, we gotta click on something. There's all kinds of stuff. It, it's similar to Photoshop filters, except they're animated. So the first thing it wants us to do is on the forest layer, add a blur effect. So it's gonna say effect, blur and sharpen, fast box, or sorry, yes, fast box blur. Okay, it's gonna sometimes takes a second to add. When you create a blur or any kind of effect, you will get this effect controls panel that comes up. And we'll talk about that in the next thing. Okay, so if we expand this summer forest, you can see now instead, well, in addition to transform, and because it has audio, there's audio, there's another line that says effects. So you can see all the effects that you've added to a layer. Now you can change it up here in the effect controls, or you can change it directly in the timeline. All right, so we're gonna set the blur radius to 25. Okay, now we got this nice faded blur effect. Okay. Under the fast box blur setting, find the blur radius setting and click the stopwatch. So now we are going to animate this. So see how there's stopwatches next to all of this? You can animate all of this. Okay, so we're gonna click that. And now we have a keyframe. Okay, so under, or sorry, we need to move the current indicator. Oops, uh, I'm gonna move this. So you can always move keyframes as well. Um, so now I'm at the beginning, I can add to zero and it'll do a keyframe for me. Okay, so you can see it working. Now, the reason it's slow is because it does have to render this stuff in real time. Okay, if you want to make stuff actually go, I believe you have to, I think you do have to render it or you have to pre-render it. Uh, so it's not as slow. All right, so you can see it in real time. Okay. So if we wanna see it working, we go to the beginning, press the space bar. Well, we gotta make sure this is the active panel and you can see it working. See, it's a little faster now that it's done some rendering. You see this green bar, that means it's rendered. Okay. Okay, next. So you can always add more than one effect to things, okay? So let's go to, again, to effect well, I gotta make sure we're selecting our layer. We go to effect, distort, distort, or sorry, mirror. Okay. Doesn't look like it did anything yet. We'll, we'll fix it. So in our effect control, we have it up here. You can also access it on the timeline you can see this reflection center, reflection angle. You can click on this target icon to kind of tell it, okay, this is where I want it to go. And we're gonna click directly in the center of the logo. Okay. And now what happens is it kind of plays out from that center. Looks really cool. Looks like a kaleidoscope almost. Okay. All right, so those are effects. 
Now that we've created this really cool logo, let's go ahead and export. That's the big part, right? We want to share it. So we want to make sure we can export. Don't save. Okay. All right. So we need to add our composition to the render queue. It's pretty similar to how it's done in Premiere. So we're just going to go up to composition, add to render queue. There it is. And I believe it's alt control M, or alt command M. I, no, it con yes, control command M. All right. Then your timeline turns into this render queue. If you need to go back to your timeline, it's on a different tab in this timeline, which is really nice. Okay, output two, you want to make sure it's going somewhere that you're going to find it. Right now it's going to the desktop. Okay, so that's where it's going to go. Please make sure to name it. Please make sure it's not just untitled or something. I'm going to keep all these settings. We'll look at them later, but I'm just going to go ahead and press render. Okay, so you're going to watch it play through and there is a progress bar. And then I'm just going to skip ahead here but I want y'all to hear the iconic finished rendering sound. Okay, so it makes this little bling when it's done rendering. All right, next. So that is all the basic tutorials. Now, if we want to look at the all, if we click the all button, it'll give you this little box at the top that says new tutorials available. I want you to click that. Uh, and pick something in here uh, that you want to work with. I would highly recommend doing the animation fundamentals. It's about 20 minutes, about the same amount of time it took to do this. And getting started with visual effects. So additionally, you can play with templates, animating a logo, 3D animation from 2D design or design motion graphics package for social media. I would highly recommend doing the animate a logo because that's kind of what we're going to be doing next. All right. That's it for now.